What's happening folks, welcome back to Celtic Fans TV, it's a post-match pint after Celtic 3, St Johnston 1. We're in an absolutely packed St Patrick's Day weekend, Malone's Bar in Glasgow. Um, if you're in there, get involved. Uh, I've got Kenny with me to go through. Kenny, what I thought when I said to Martin afterwards, his performance, his goal this season, that was probably one of the better ones. Yeah, I mean, was it a roll back to the title winning form in the last two years? No. Was it something that was pretty encouraging in terms of our change of direction? I would say it was. I mean, at this point in the season, many games are left eight, eight games. Yeah. Sadly, hopefully at this point in the season, you're just trying to protect the league and keep into a rhythm. We're still trying to find a rhythm. We're still actually trying to find something. And I think today the team basically picked itself with the exception of one position. He had the decision to make it striker. Adam Eder, not a great out against Livingston. Disappointing penalty against Hearts, but he's, he's probably still done enough. He's done it. He's made a positive change to the side, Adam Eder. Kyogo, been off form, but scored a goal against Livingston. He's got a decision to make around what side is going to spearhead Celtic to the title. Adam Eder is a man who is in Norwich reserves almost. Is it fair to expect him, a man of, uh, coming from Norwich's bench, to spearhead Celtic to a title? It's not. The reality is, though, his input's probably saved us from the title race so far. Yeah. But on balance, he's decided the team that is going to win the league is only going to be a team with their talisman playing, and that's Kyogo. And that proven to be the right decision. Kyogo's been off form for two reasons. We've not been able to find him. The system's not worked. But he himself has also been lacking confidence. Today's confidence was back. You could see it. It was manifesting itself all over the park. He said, a goal chopped off, a brilliant diving header. He's then been brave and won a goal with a header. He's then got an assist. And he's playing with Smell on his... another one chopped off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my God, we had so many of them chopped off. It was almost hard to, to keep count. But he was playing with Smell on his face. He's been playing with the weight of the world on his shoulders. It didn't seem that way today. And if we're going to win the league, I think it's going to be if he's if he's spearheading us. Also, the other, the second huge difference was Cameron Carter-Vickers coming back in. He affects every area of the park. Yeah. He brings solidity to the defence which looks lost without him but it also affects the middle of the park and it affects our wide areas because he suffocates the game he takes the ball down at speed he feeds people wide at speed we've lost the intensity of Postacoglu's side almost everywhere in the park for most of the season that's why we're second in the league Postacoglu's side would not be second in this league there's one player that's not lost any of that intensity and it's him he's still playing the same way that he has done for the last two years he gets the ball down in the deck rapid and he he breathes life into the whole side. If we're going to win the league, it's if he's fit. If he's not fit, we've saw it. We've no chance. So those two things were a huge positive today in terms of a change of direction. The rest of the side, I thought there were good signs. Greg Taylor coming in the middle of the park, but with a bit of purpose and actually finding people was good. Our winger seemed to be playing with a bit of freedom. Matt O'Reilly, although his final ball was probably pretty poor in the second half, he played with a bit more presence, a bit more purpose. I think overall it just pushed us towards a potentially towards a, 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 some form that, 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 that could pick up the points, maybe to win the, you know, win the title. That's not going to happen in one game. It's going to happen over the change of the next two or three games, pushing us in that direction. But maybe this was a good first step. I think the inclusion of Kyogo was a big decision because I think even for me, looking at the starting 11 prediction last night, I almost put Kyogo in and then I thought, no, do you know what? He's probably going to persist with Ida. Ida's had three or four starts in a row, and as you say, his input against Dundee, turning the game around for us at Mullerwell. I just thought he might stick with him. I know Kyogo got the goal off the bench last weekend against Livingston, but I thought I think he would just go with Ida. But I was really encouraged by what I watched from Kyogo today. I think it's one of his best performances of the season by a country mile. He was much more involved, as you say. His energy looked much better. He was a constant threat. He scores three goals in the first half. Two are chopped off for, for offside, but... He was, he was back to the old Kyogo almost and I, I'm, I'm hesitant to obviously say that, that this is him turned a corner and he's going to play like this to the rest of the season but we've, we've seen far too many false starts this season to say something like that but it was encouraging that that, that type of performance from him because he, he was he was always involved and I think a mark of how well he played was his assist for Koonin early in the second half because a great ball we tailor into the channel but he takes the touch and he plays the kind of ball that he himself lives off of in the centre of the six yard box but he knows that if he puts it in there into the right area Sunday times are run properly it's a guaranteed goal and, and Kuhn just gets in behind uh, the St Johnson fullback and puts it away I thought that typified his, his performance today Kyogo 
I mean, he, his countryman Hitati's on the cusp of coming back, right? Part of the problem is we can't find him. Hitati knows how to find him. There's a real synergy between Hitati and Kyogo. Maybe he had that in mind. Maybe he knows that after the break, he's going to have Hitati sitting in behind him. And if he starts to buzz, that could be a combination that helps us win the league. He's, he's a confidence player, Kyogo. Was it, was it sort of towards the... There was a period last season where his confidence was completely short. He scored a tap-in goal against Motherwell and he became revitalised. Hopefully this is him spurring into that, that sort of action because I think I th it almost feels just a bit unfeasible that Adam Ida is going to play out the rest of the season and win Celtic the title. And you've said it, we've discussed it in the past, you're only as good as your striker. Kyogo, on his day, can win us this title. And if that's a step in the right direction of him coming back to form, then that's that's on balance, I think, the right decision that was made today to start him. Yeah, that's the underside of the bar in the second half as well. Um, could, have, could have had a lot more goals, but... Matt O'Reilly was linking up with him as well. Matt didn't have a great game today, but sometimes he's been out of form, O'Reilly. He completely has, yeah. out of form. Sometimes when people on their journey getting back to form have a game where they just become alive, things don't quite go for them, but you start to see their relationships rebuilding. And I could see that today with O'Reilly and Kyogo. You might find that in O'Reilly's next match he becomes the animal that he was early on the season. Because there were signs today that he was starting to just get that chemistry back with Kyogo. Yeah, I think that the first part of the first half, maybe the first 15, 20 minutes, we hadn't we hadn't quite hit the heights yet, we hadn't quite hit our stride. I think the second half of that first half was much more encouraging. That's when we had the flurry of the offside goals. And Nicholas Kuhn, we've, we've briefly mentioned his goal, but He's vital in the build-up for Kyogo's goal as well. He puts in it's a very, very similar cross, a very similar goal yeah, actually. During the week, yeah. um, similar cross that he puts in for Maeda's first goal last week. And we're just starting to see maybe wee glimpses from Kuhn that maybe there is a player in there after all. I know we were all it seemed like we were all very quick to judge him. And we're still not judging him either way, but he's been much better in the last two performances. But it's just because those first three or four games, they, they were so far from the level that we were all a bit sort of stunned by it. I think you see today and last week the glimpses of, of maybe what he can do. Part of the problem is we're desperate for somebody to fill that position. Yang's been inconsistent. Great out against Dundee but then gets suspended. Palmer's like a bit of a circus act at times. You don't know what you're going to get. And is now out for a month as well. <laughs> He's injured. Forrest, actually, Forrest seems to be coming a bit of a useful tool. But... He's been, he's been, you can't really rely on James Forrest at this stage as he's a Mikey Johnson's out on loan you can go on and on about our wingers we're desperate for someone out there so it's not a, usually when you bring someone in 3-4 million pounds they sit in behind someone who's a nailed on starter and you bring them on and you feed them into the team he's coming on and he's breathing down his neck desperate for him to just become a starting 11 player and he's felt the weight of the jersey it's been obvious you can see that Rapid Vienna are not a minute a minute of a side but they're not they don't have 60,000 fans so it's a new it's a new environment from him what we've saw his output has been so bad so far that it's almost perplexing you think he, he must be capable of more than that Celtic as bad as our scout has been could not have come up with someone for three million pounds that has got that level of output he started to show that the last couple of games great couple of assists his use of the ball looks good statistically with his speed apparently he's almost you know he's got the same speed as Maeda he's not a, but what I'd like to see him do is open his legs you've not saw him open his legs yet He's not still, even within his last two reasonable performances, he's still not the bravery to go outside somebody, yeah, yeah. <laughs> take a man on. I've not seen him at the byline yet. But his use of the ball seems to be improving. He's developed a bit of a presence. You watch him now and you think, something could happen here. Whereas you're watching him prior to that and you're thinking, you know, there's, there's only a problem coming. So yeah, encouraging stuff. Too early to judge. But if he can start to open his legs more and have a bit more bravery to take a man on, maybe there is something in there. Yeah, and I think there's been some points of discussion this week, even I think Brendan Rodgers mentioned that, that he had to build up his power, build up his stamina from when he arrived. Um, rumours of a virus, I know he had surgery in his mouth, I think, when he first arrived at the club. Yeah. So maybe it was that, maybe his, his fitness level just was, was so far off it that his first few outings were, were really that bad and that was reflected in that, but uh, that's up, that would be a whole other issue if you're throwing him in when he's, when he's not fit enough, but more encouraging from him. and. In midfield today, Matt O'Reilly, better again. I think we've had, again, in, in parallel with the team this season, we've had players and collectively with performances where you think, right, maybe this is it now, and then put one or two together and the next week it falls apart. But O'Reilly was much better today. And I think across the pitch, going into that second half, the combination play in the final third 
was much more like it. We created a lot more chances, even if you compare it to the second half last week. Um, I thought we started that second half really well, and there was some good combinations and a bit of better speed in the attacking play as well. Because what we've had nothing out of all season is the fullbacks really playing into Lincoln in the midfield. The fullbacks have just been lost. Greg Taylor comes inside sometimes, so does Alistair Johnson. It never yields anything, they look a bit confused. It looked a bit better today. O'Reilly was just spinning off, playing nice combinations with Alistair Johnson, trying to feed Kyogo in. It, it was all looking, we were playing with a little bit more level of urgency. That's what we've lost, even at the start of the game today. For the first, the keeper never had a save for the first half hour. We've got far superior players on the part, but they're not playing with that level of belief. The belief is not there, which means the urgency is not there and it needs to be there. It was starting to creep in towards that second half performance. One player in the middle of the park that I think is letting us down is Bernardo, though. Bernardo is a talented guy. We saw his goal against Rangers. We saw how artistic he was against Dundee away. He was coming into a real nice groove of form there, but he's, he seems to have lost it again. He's going again. passive again. He's going. He's not playing with the level of intensity that we need, and that's a crucial position. I think unless you've got... Mc, Awata's inferior to McGregor. If you've got Awata sitting in there, even if O'Reilly's on form, he needs to be supported by someone else. It does, just doesn't look like it's going to be Bernardo. And he's had so many minutes now, but the linchpin's coming back. Hatate is coming back. Even if he, can, if he comes back and he's playing at 80% of his level for this last eight, nine games of the season, it could be enough to get us over the line. It's a big if. The guy's been injured most of the season. He's one man. But he can transform us relative to the output we're getting from Bernardo at the moment. Yeah, McGregor's missing, obviously, which is a, a huge blow for us, a huge void to fill. Iwata's in there just now. Um, I think in the first, talking about that intensity in the first 15, 20 minutes, it seemed like every time Iwata got the ball, he wasn't allowed to play it forward. He, he, he kept going sideways when he had opportunities maybe to thread a ball in between players, in between the lines, and try and get O'Reilly turned at the defenders, but he kept going sideways. And he actually ends up having two brilliant chances today. A one from a corner where it falls to him yeah. eight or ten yards out. He takes a touch and Yank just smashes this. It's a goal. Gets blocked. And then right on full time, he's got a header underneath the crossbar. And he manages to put it over. I mean, he, so he, came, I mean, he came here as J-League Player of the Year. He came here at a point in time where we had such a good hit rate from the Asian market. You think, right, this guy's the J-League Player. But he's, he's, going to be a, he's going to be a superstar. So he carried that weight when he came into the team. The reality is he's trying to do an impossible task. He's trying to displace our most consistent player we've had for, for a decade. He's not going to be able to do it for two reasons. I, I, well, one primary reason, he's just not he's just not good as Callum McGregor. He cannot play the game in an offensive way that the game the way Callum McGregor can. He's quite a strong guy, quite a robust guy. <coughs> but I think I think overall he's probably been a bit of an anti-climax, right? Relative to his build-up coming into the side. He's getting a nice little opportunity to play now with McGregor out. And maybe it's just unfair because we're comparing him to a position which is irreplaceable. Almost whoever came in there on a budget would not be inferior to Callum McGregor. He's doing a reasonably robust job, but we need Callum back. We're not going to win the league with, with a Wata anchor in the midfield because he's just not playing with the offensive balance that we need in that number six position. Yeah. Oh, well, we can still hear us, by the way. I thought it was St. Patrick's Day, no Halloween. Um, in terms of Kenny, the, the clean sheet record, I think we've kept one clean sheet in the last eight games, um, none in the last six I believe it is now. When it got to 3-0 today, and we'll come to the third goal in a minute, um, when it got to 3-0 today, I'm just crying out for the team to keep a clean sheet and, and show that intensity. I know we've made changes in the game, Carter Vickers has come off, Iwata dropped into centre half and then last ten minutes Lager Bielka comes on, Iwata goes back into midfield and we, we lose the goal, but I just think the team teams that win the league are the teams that are the meanest defensively. They don't give up chances and they don't give up goals. I want to see that defensive intensity, regardless of who's playing, how many subs have been made. I want to see a collective effort that we do not let the ball go in the goal. And far too often recently, it's been far too easy to score against We're too reliant on one man. We're reliant on Carter Vickers. I mean, we looked <coughs> pretty assured at the back today because he was there. I mean, it's, as soon as he gets off the park, we, we, we lose a schoolboy goal almost simultaneously when he goes off the park. The ball whipped in at the back. I mean, how many times, how many goals, shots and goal did they have today? What, one or something? Two, ends yeah. up in the back of the net. We're far too reliant on one man. And unfortunately, it's not a problem. Sorry, it is a problem that's a bit endemic because we don't have anyone to play beside him. Well, showed real frailty last week 
of his attempts at playing out from the back. Yeah. Scales has done a shift this season. But we know he's not at the level of, say, Starfelt. We spent £8 million on other centre-halves who Meraki is injured. I don't know why Lagabielka is literally... He's a Swedish international. He looked bad when he came in. Couldn't look bad when he came in. Henrik Larsson looked bad when he came in. Right, you need to give people a little bit of time. To spend several million pounds on a Swedish international and completely banish him to the point whereby today, when you're just bringing on some fresh legs to give them a bit of an outing, you don't even you, you drop a what in the centre back <laughs> yeah. who's been pretty bad defensively he's bad like the end of last season defensively a what that's a slap in the face for Lagerbiel it's just odd so there is a big problem there we need to somehow get through this season with whoever Fatter Vickers is beside but next season the one single we obviously need to sign a goalkeeper we won't have one but my god we need to sign probably two centre backs and put as much money as we've got behind one of them because it's killing us, centre back's killing us. We've lost so many cheap goals just from weak, weak centre back defending. Aye, absolutely. Um, I think that, I don't know how we improve on it. It looks like it can only be done when Carter Vickers is there. That's the only hope we've got of looking anything like assured at the back. Um, in terms of that third goal, I thought it was a brilliant finish for James Forrest. Um, on his weaker foot, takes a touch with his right foot, just slows down, um, sorts his, his stride pattern out and just lashes it into the far corner. And I thought last weekend, the second half against Livingston was actually really poor, but we did sort of brighten up and liven up when James Forrest came into the game. Um, I think he it, it was, it was, it was good today as well when he came on. I know Kuhn played, played relatively well in the game, but I think Forrest, it's hard to know where James Forrest is at because he's played so little football, he's so late in his career. Can we hang a hat on him to be an impact sub from now till the end of the season? Really difficult to be able to say that, but I think he's he's made a positive influence in the last two weeks. He's a brilliant goal. He's looked really slick. He looked slick against Livingston. He looked really slick today. Look, if there's one man <coughs> at the business end of a season when you're trying to grind out a league title, and really meaningful league title, because it, you, you hang on to tens of millions of pounds of Champions League's cash that should Victoria Plains pick up another point it may not be there for us for many years to come crucial league title someone that scored in 14 of the last seasons in a row is someone that's not going to be phased by that right James comes in in this environment this hotbed the 60,000 people in the stand he's just numb to and if he can turn up when it really matters and he cares James Forrest cares he'll have enjoyed wearing the captain's armband for that spell today he, he, he's looking it's entirely down to him Brendan Rodgers said he's our best winger and he was sort of a bit of abuse for that in the media I think just what he meant was had he been a fully fit James Forrest he's our best player in, best winger and he is so it was, it, it, it's refreshing to see him with a clean pair of legs in the last couple of games he could be a really useful tool for his James in getting through this last seven or eight games brilliant finish deadly finish from what beyond the penalty spot area he's work. just whipped it in so yeah, look, exciting stuff. If you can play him at Ibrox for 20 minutes, he'll have the bravery and he'll have the confidence to go and take it to them, no problem. And a nice a nice little outcome the last couple of games as Forrest coming back to the surface. Yeah, uh, a welcome stress-free outing today, relatively stress-free, uh, given how the season's gone. We go back to the top of the table. It applies a bit of pressure on Rangers going to Dundee tomorrow. Um, again, so difficult to try and gauge where we're at and whether we can put a run together, given how the season's gone. But... How do you feel after that? We'll get that international break coming up now, and then it's Livingston away, and then Ibrox. I think it's going to hinge on our key men. It's going to hinge on Kyogo playing like he did today. It's going to hinge on Carter Vickers being fit. It's going to hinge on Hitati coming back and hitting the ground running, and McGregor coming back and being refreshed and being the Callum McGregor that can drive us to the titles he's done throughout his whole career. If all of those four things fall into place down the spine of the side, then they might. Kyogo's good size today. Vickers seems to be back fit. Hitati's back on the tough training. McGregor's due back. If those four things come into play down the side of the spine, I don't have a problem going to Ibrox at all. Unfortunately, with two points behind, if any of that falls away, difficult. yeah, it's difficult to see that you know we can see out the rest of the campaign unbeaten because we're going to need to be unbeaten. I can't see us dropping points anywhere and, and surviving the title. It's possible, but I think I think we need to be perfect from here on in. But there's hope. If the spine of the side return in the way that I've just described, there's hope. If Nicholas Kuhn can keep going the way he has, if Maeda can continue to put in powerful performances on that left-hand side, there's every chance. Do I feel good about it? No. I feel it feels precarious. 
but there is a chance, Paul. I don't feel like it's some sort of for long hope. We, we've got a, we've got a fighting chance of winning this league. Brown is off on today. Uh, a few candidates I thought for man of the match today couldn't go to the sponsor. Who was it for you? I would give it to Vickers just because I thought his sheer presence, his professionalism. I mean, he was winning balls in the last third at times before he went off. Get it on the deck and feeding people. And you almost forget he's a centre half when he's doing that. He just trans. He can't speak highly enough of him. He just transforms the side. And I, w I would give it to him alone just because maybe it's exacerbated my mind because we've missed him and he's back today and you realise just how much you miss him. But I would give it to Cameron Carter Vickers because he's someone that we can simply not play without. Yeah, I agree. Uh, there you go, that's it for post match pint. Like the video and we will see you after the international break. Enjoy your St. Patrick's Day. Thank you.